Faith receives the blessings of God. And, and really what we're trying to do is receive the invisible promises, blessings, provisions that God has made for us. And the way to do it is by faith. So the conclusion here is he will have, he will have whatever he says. And then in Mark eleven twenty four, it went on to say, when you, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So, so the, the, the beginning of the process, there's you with a need and the end of the process, it's you with an answer. And that, that process in between is what we call faith. So Jesus said, have faith in God. Walk in faith. Release faith. Uh, express your faith. And faith is made up of two parts. You believe in your heart and you say it with your mouth. And uh, I compared that to a molecule of water. If you were to boil faith down or cut it down to its smallest particle possible, and uh, you still want, want it to be faith, you would have one molecule or water, you'd have one molecule of water. And that one molecule of water is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. <clears throat> and that is, by definition, water. If you take anything else away from that molecule, you don't have water anymore. And you could add a whole bunch of things, but if you don't have two H's and an O, you don't have water. You could have a thousand H's, but if you don't have an O, you don't have water. And you could have a thousand O's, but you don't have any H's, you don't have water. And the same is true with faith. You have to have a, a, a believe, an inward conviction. In other words, you've got to believe it in your heart. Jesus said, he does not doubt in his heart, but believes. Where? In his heart. And we'll talk more about that as we go on in further sessions. But you believe it in your heart, and then it has to be followed with something you say with your mouth. And these two components are always involved in faith. Faith has to be expressed. You can't, and this is, this is where people miss it. They think because they agree with the scriptures or they agree with the principle, they agree that it's God's will, they agree that it's good, that, uh, that that's faith in and of itself. But it doesn't become yours until you begin to say it, until you confess it, until you express it uh, with your mouth. Uh, Romans 10.10, 10, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you see the two components there, and we looked at several instances. Uh, you can listen to the last session and you'll see that. There were several instances where we saw believing and speaking, believing in confession, believing and saying, and so you cannot um, have faith, active faith, unless you have those two things. You can see how people betray their faith by maybe going to church, reading books, listening to audio teaching on some subject that they agree with, they like it, they believe in, let's say, victory or overcoming life or abundance, uh, provision in life. If you say that and you know and you think that I believe those scriptures I believe it's the word of God I believe it's the will of God for every Christian to overcome and then you follow that up by talking defeat and talking about what a loser you are and what bad luck you have and how it never works out for you that's not faith you can feel good about the word all you want to and you can listen to all the sermons you want to listen to on overcoming but you cannot live an overcoming life when you talk defeat. And, and I think that's where people miss it. They think, well, God knows my heart and God loves me and, and, and these things belong to me. They do, but faith is, is really the, the bridge between you and these invisible blessings of God in the spirit world. The only way for you to access those blessings is by faith. By grace are you saved through faith. So how do you get to those? But by faith, what is faith? It's believing in the heart and saying with the mouth. So if you're talking defeat, you're just not going to access victory. If you're talking poverty, even though you may believe that it's God's will to supply your needs abundantly, you may believe in the prosperity message and you've got all the series to prove it and the books to prove it. And you may be giving and, 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 uh, and sowing your seeds. But if you're talking poverty, then it's, that's not faith. 
Faith believes in the heart and faith confesses with the mouth. It's an inward conviction and it's an outward expression. And I wanted to, to take the time to do that. Really, in this series and in this entire study that I've been doing, if you follow this program, you know that we've been on this subject more or less for the last several, uh, the last several filmings, the last several series. And, and the reason is it's just impacted me so much. For another thing, I, I've reached this point in my teaching um, in, in this program, the, the faith portion of, of uh, my, my material that God's given me over the last 30 years, we've reached that point. And so I studied faith out and, and spent a lot of time digging these things out for you. And so, so one of the things that I realized about faith, because it's a massive subject, it's so vital and so important. Every Christian has to, has to walk in faith to some level or another to get saved and to walk with God. So it's just vital to our Christian experience. But there are certain things you need to understand about faith. And it's very simple. You can split it up into three categories. One, one is, is, is how faith comes. And we talked about that in the series, You Have the Spirit of Faith. The other is what faith is. And we're talking about that right now. We're defining what faith is. And then the third area that, we, that I wanted to study out and teach out is how to release your faith. And that's coming. So we are in the middle of that teaching. And it's exciting to me. I don't know if you, you care about th those things, but that's really the course we've been on. And I literally started this teaching with God likes faith, which explains why faith is so important. So I did the why, and now we're doing the what, and then we're going to go on to the how faith is released. And, and uh, we've already talked about how to, how to receive faith or how to grow in faith or how faith comes. And so, and so we're in the what is faith, and we're going to define this. I want you to know and understand. I want you to get it on the inside so that these principles will stay with you and remain with you because you can use faith in every area of life. Uh, I already read from Hebrews, whether we need to subdue kingdoms or stop the mouths of lions or become valiant in battle or turn to flight the armies of aliens or obtain promises, all of these different challenges are, are answered. They are met with faith. And so whatever you're facing today, you need to have faith in God. And in order to do that, you need to know what it is. So faith is, once again, it's believing in your heart, saying with your mouth. Let me give you another example. In Luke chapter 8, and uh, this is where the disciples and Jesus got in the boat and they, uh, and they sailed into the storm. Luke chapter 8. And you say, well, why do you use the same uh, examples over and over again, because that's all we have. The Gospels, really, they only mention a few healing examples, about 19, and then they, they mention a few of these modern, uh, these miracles, miraculous experiences, and the reason that the Holy Spirit picked this, this, this uh, group of miracles, signs and wonders and healings is because that's what we needed to illustrate the truths. So uh, this is one of the greatest illustrations of what faith will do and how faith responds to a challenge anywhere in the Bible. And the disciples and Jesus got into the boat. They're going across to the other side. The storm is, is sinking their ship. And they awoke Jesus. This is verse 24. They awoke him saying, so faith is believing in the heart and then saying or confessing with your mouth. Well, here's what they believed and they spoke. They said, Master, Master, we are perishing. So you can see right there that they are believing and speaking the wrong thing. And you would think, but, but because you're on a mission for God, it doesn't matter what you say and it doesn't matter what you think. God knows your heart. Faith was still important in this situation. And uh, Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the waters. And let me just say he did it by faith. He rebuked the wind, the raging of the waters, and they ceased. He literally said, peace, be still. So he believed and he spoke and the storm responded. And then he looked at the disciples and he said to them, where's your faith? So if faith is believing in the heart and confessing with the mouth, by definition, 
they didn't qualify because they were doubting, they were believing, all right, but they were believing the wrong thing. They were believing they were going to die, and they were confessing they were going to die. So you can see right there, if you're going down that road, that's the wrong direction. You need to be shaken and turned around, and that's what Jesus was trying to do. He was saying, guys, where's your faith? This isn't faith. How can you throw away everything I've taught you, everything you believed about me, Everything you believed about your future, your destiny, <laughs> the kingdom of God, you've thrown it all away in one storm and you've begun to, to, to believe you're going to die. So Jesus illustrated what faith is and he rebuked them and, uh, and because they weren't exercising their faith. And the reason he did it is because they were capable of it. And, and that's really the personal responsibility that we talk about when we talk about walking by faith. They had a personal responsibility. You and I have a personal responsibility. I'm going to say this again. There are some storms in your life that will never cease until you believe God. There are some mountains that will never move until you choose to believe God. Jesus said, here's how you do it. You speak to that mountain. You believe in your heart. You speak with your mouth. And when you believe those things which you say, you'll have it. You'll have what you say. And that is releasing faith into a situation, a real life situation. Let's go to 1 Samuel. This is fascinating to me. I was reading this this morning. And um, it's just powerful what happened when David met Goliath. And uh, you might be surprised, I was. Um, you, you know the setup. David was going to meet his brothers. He was taking food to his brothers who were in the army. Uh, they were on the front lines. David was a, a shepherd. He was younger. So he was just left out keeping the sheep while his older brothers were doing the important work. They were fighting on the uh, side of God. They were in the army of God, the army of Israel. So David was told by his dad, take this, this cheese and, and, and this food to your brothers and see how they're doing. And so David's on his way there. He didn't have any necessarily have any warning. He didn't know that this was going to be a day that would change his life in Israel forever. Uh, he was just doing what he was supposed to do. He was staying in the will of God for his life. God didn't even warn him and say, you know, today you're going to meet this big bad giant who's going to scare you, but I want you to go kill him. God didn't tell him any of that because David walked in faith. He lived the faith life. And when faith meets a challenge, it's just ready for that challenge. And I want to encourage you to prepare yourself for challenges. They will come. Don't think that just, just because you get over this next hurdle or get through this next challenge that life's going to smooth out and you're going to be able to coast all the way home. We face challenges in life and we're, they're not ne necessarily announced. You're not always going to know when you're going to face something, but we need to be prepared in our faith. And David was. And, and just to let you know where we're going here, David said, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, where this whole account is, is, uh, is, is it described, David said, the Bible says David said five times. And then it says here that David spoke one time. And so I want to lead you through this because this is how faith is activated. This is how faith is released. David knew some things, obviously. He knew he, was a, 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 he had a covenant with God. He knew that God was the God of Israel. He knew that he had certain rights and privileges. So he knew his word. He knew the promises of God. But he didn't just sit on them and wait for God to make everything better. He acted and here's how he acted. So he, he, the, when he got there, this giant, every day, he, this giant Goliath would come out and, and curse the armies of God, which is, you know, it's, that's not right, and, and it wasn't scriptural. But Israel was afraid of this giant. He was 9 to 11 feet tall, somewhere between 9 and 11 feet, depending on uh, which history you believe, uh, the size of a cubit at that time. But let's just say he was 9 and a half feet tall, and he was a giant. He was huge. He had a, a spear, and they talked about how much his spear had weighed, and he had a shield that somebody else had to carry. So he was very intimidating. And he would curse the armies of God, and David heard this. So here's the first reference 
to David speaking, verse 26. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? I'll tell you what, now that is faith. David's not saying, wow, he sure is big. Ooh, I'd sure hate to face that guy. Wow, I don't know how we're going to defeat this giant. That's what Israel had done. They had studied the giant. They knew all about him. They were scared of him. They had already been defeated in their minds. And David had the opposite reaction. David's thinking, you mean there's rewards for killing this guy? How does he think he can get away? He's not just cursing us. He's cursing the armies of God. He doesn't have a right. He's an uncircumcised Philistine. In other words, he doesn't have a covenant with God. We have a covenant with God. He's trespassing on God's property. And I want to... I want to imagine what would happen if I were the one that beat that giant. What, what kind of rewards are we talking about? And so they told him what all he would get. His family would be free from taxes, and he gets to marry the king's daughter. And it just, you know, it, it was quite enticing. And uh, David was already motivated, but that just added to it. Then in verse 29... Here's the second reference to David speaking. In verse 29, And David said, What have I done? Because his brothers were saying, Would you just quit? You're not, you're not a soldier. You're button in. You're just a boy. Just go back and take care of your sheep. And David said, What have I done? Is there not a cause? And I'll tell you, that just inspires me. That phrase, Is there not a cause, simply means somebody needs to do something. And, and, and if, it's your, if you're facing something like this, I'll tell you who it is. That person is you. When you realize that, that I'm in a situation that's not right, it's not scriptural, it's not according to the will of God, then you need to come to the conclusion, you know what, there's a cause. Somebody needs to do something. And since nobody else is doing anything, I'll do it myself. And when you begin to believe God for yourself, you become totally independent from other people. You shouldn't have to feel as if you need somebody else to do your faith and do your praying for you. You shouldn't feel like you need somebody to rescue your life. And I know we feel that way at times. And all of us have been there at times. And it's not wrong to ask people to pray with you and stand with you in faith. But let's grow to the point where we realize if anything's going to if anybody's going to make a difference in my life it's going to be me. I don't need somebody else's permission. I don't need somebody else's handout. I don't need to 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 trust somebody else's word from God. I've got a Bible. I've got a relationship with God. I know my rights and privileges and when they're being violated, I am the first and last line of defense in my life. Is there not a cause? And I tell you, that is inspiring. That, that'll cause you to rise up and say, you know what? Something's going to change here today. And that's kind of, David was, was going down this path. First of all, he recognized there was a problem. Then he realized somebody needs to do something about this. And Israel was scared that there were, none of them were going to. They had already made that decision. We're not fighting him. None of us is ready to go out and face that giant. And so David he just talked himself right into faith. He talked himself right into a fight. And he talked himself right into a victory. And did you know you can do the same thing? But if you're taking Israel's position and all you've been able to do is talk about the problem, worry about the problem, wait for the problem, and when the problem arrives, you, you, you cower and you hide in a foxhole, that's the wrong approach. We need to turn this thing around. No matter how big the giant is, He's not bigger than God. Is the giant bigger than David? Yes. Is the giant that you face bigger than you? Probably. Is the mountain that you need to move bigger than you? Probably. But it's not bigger than God. And faith in God is the victory. It's faith in God that brings you to the desired conclusion. You shall have it, the Bible says. <laughs> when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have it. When you speak to the mountain, if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe those things you're saying, you shall have whatever you say. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout.